And yes, Hi. we have this young man with us. Jacob Elliott will be our first guest tonight. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about the show. First, I'd like to welcome this young man to our show. Compliments of Margaret Maxwell from the Maxwell Farm, um, who couldn't be here tonight, but I hope will be here eventually on some future cast taping because she's an awesome person. And I'd like to know more about her because she's one of the first people I met around here. And um, biggest heart you'd ever hope to see. And she bestowed this elf named, well, he's a gnome, but he's named Maxwell in her honor. And uh, he'll be our little hobbit tonight. So we'll do that. But first I'd like to introduce you also to the singer of this evening. We have a couple actually. We have April Kasperi, who will sing a wonderful song for you tonight, maybe two. And then we'll have Brian McRae. And I know you've all heard of him because he's president of this TV station and he sings on every single show. He sings in Gaelic, which is a Scottish tongue. And I hear he's pretty good at that. And then we'll have Gwen Bailey from the Technical Center. How do you say it? What's the complete name? North Country Career Center. North Country Career Center, mm -hmm. which is an amazing place. And uh, if I could go back to school, that's where I'd go. Um, there's so many things to learn there, and Gwen, Gwen will tell us all about that. And, where's my other guest? Oh, there she is. April will be on too. It, uh, that's your mummy, to talk about her wonderful mom. art. I don't and, still call my mom mommy. Pardon? Mom, I don't still call my mom mommy. Oh, you call her mom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Very good. So, April? Would you like to join us now for with a song, please? Sure. Thank you. Oh, Here we go. A little holiday song. Um, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon Holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Oh, thank you, April. Yes. Slap you upside the head. I'm getting closer. I can do that. Yeah. So, this is a young man who would like to start something. And as I've said on my previous show, Elf Song Club. That's right. The young people today can certainly change the world mm -hmm. one club at a time. So, tell us a little bit about Pokemon. First of all, I was in the middle of opening a pack and I decided. So, I got to the reverse hollow and I decided let's find out what the rare is together. You need a clock. Oh, oh. Oh, I got a rainbow trainer. I totally didn't see this before in life. But tell, me, tell me what Pokemon is, please, because I don't know. A card game. How do you play it? You put the cards down and battle the other person. I thought you had to go places and find different things, too. That's, those are, that's the video games. Oh, that's the video games. So... If you and I were going to play this, how many cards would we get? And what is the... Are they all that pretty? May I see one, please? It's I'll describe it for you. Mm. I'm not wearing my glasses. Here we go. Are they three-dimensional? Yes. And they move? I used to love things like this when the I was The cards going. are not 3D and they don't move. The, the games are and they do move. And what's the purpose of this game? To beat the other person. Oh, actually, to be the very best, the best, the best, blah, 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 Pokemon theme song. Oh, it's a Pokemon theme song, too. Now, you'd like to start a club so you'll have other people to play with. Now, you're 10 years old. What school do you go to? Well, I already have some. Don't mind it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty valuable in good condition. Oh. That's fine. Well, then let's go to finances. How much are they worth? Um, depends. What color are we talking about? Like this one, this one. Well, okay. that one. This one? Yes. First, this one. Describe it to the audience, please. It's a reverse hollow, Glimmer Tinkle Stadium, 
Probably about a good seven cents. Mm. That adds up. My it's, grandfather always used to say, take care of your cents and your dollars will look after themselves. It's true. Grandpa was a wise man. This one. He had many pennies. <laughs> this one. In the PSA 10, which is best condition, probably about $50. No kidding. Oh, oh 10. I'm not sure. We could ch When you play the game, do you, get the, get, do you get the cards? No, not in the game. No? You don't. So if you play the game, get a Pokemon, they don't like ship that card to you. You have to open packs. Where do you get packs? Mom, I could, here, well I could, I could scan this to see how much it's worth. Oh, it's okay, we'll, we'll just take your word for it. I'm, I don't know. I know, that. I have no idea. That's, that's okay. That's, that's, just, that's okay. So you think it's kind of an investment, but when you play the game, how many, no, how know. many people play the game? At once. Rule, oh, rule to one or at once? Cause you can't at your table. You can't interact with other people. Oh, so you play it online? You can't. Okay. Interact with other people. Well, when you interact with other people. You can't. I said. Oh, you can't. I said can't. Can't. Oh. So, but so do you mean how many people play worldwide? Probably about a few hundred million, one or two hundred million. How, how do you start a game? Or get into one? Well, you gotta go buy the card chip. We'll get it online. And then Nintendo. At a Nintendo oh. shop and then put in the game code to the play. And how many people play around here that you know? Because I know you'd like to start a club locally. So this is your one. chance to pitch it. One. And do they live close by? About. 20 minutes away, maybe 15. It's Jameson, Mom. How far away is that? About 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 That's minutes. not bad. No. That's not bad. So you play with that person, but he's got the chip and he's got the Nintendo, and you play with the machines. We can't play together because you need a Nintendo account or whatever for that. And my aunt Sam's working on helping, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, it's actually not my Nintendo, it's hers, but she left it for me. Really nice. Hmm? Really nice. So it's at your house now? Yeah. Very nice. How did you get rid of her? <laughs> Some people will do anything for Nintendo, you know. <laughs> she moved out about a mile away with her boyfriend. Ah, ah, this is great. So I'm glad you I'm glad you got them together so that you could have the Nintendo. You're such a little conniver, I love you. <laughs> you too could be president of the United States. <laughs> I'm playing on money actually. Are you really? Are you political? Guys, if I won. Make sure that too many people don't vote for me, because I don't want to win. I just want to see how many votes I can get. I do not trust me without responsibility. I will freak out. <laughs> I think that qualifies you. <laughs> Actually, you might be overqualified. You never know. I vote for you for heaven's sake. So tell me something. If you were, if you were the president or the governor of this great state of Vermont, what would you do to make it better? What is Vermont? Everything is free. And if it doesn't work here, you can always move to North Korea and fit right in. Whatever you want. No thanks. All right. No thanks. But I do you have any really I serious... really don't want to go there. No, thank you. But I've got a question. I was serious. I think young people today will be my age eventually. Shelves go like this. Don't want to North Korea. Okay. Yeah, it's not very good there. It's not. It's not. But if you could, if you could change anything about your life today... Everything is free, and at all stores, even clothing stores, even if it's specifically one thing, Pokemon is constantly in stock. If they're getting low, immediately reshipped, and every, and everything is free. Kind of like a socialistic look at things. Everything. I see. Oh, you yeah. know what happens? You know but what happens in socialism? But is Saint John's Bay its own state? Is it? St. John's where is his own state? Not that I've heard. Or is it in Vermont? I'm not sure. It's in Vermont. Okay, good. Because, because, um, because, within, because, for like, I don't know, like 20 miles, there's no GameStop. So I've literally, ever, I've only been to a GameStop one time and I saw in there and I'm like, wow, that's cool. So that would be one thing you'd like to build around here? Yeah, on the Infrastructure of Pokemon, games, right? And stop and um, everything's clean it too. Um, and do be lying. 
Oh, well, if it's going to be free in Derby Line, I kind of could I'd stick around. I think. I think that'd be a good deal. Better than Walmart if it's free. Everything else is free. No, in the whole state, everything. Okay. If everything's My free. My mom's free. No, no. <laughs> People aren't for sale. So they won't exactly look. So she can't be because she's not for sale for now. <laughs> not for now. <laughs> yeah. You never know when that uh, human know. trafficking will open up really locally. <laughs> you never know. You nut. But I think that's a great idea. I think you're an amazing young man. I love you. I think you've got a great personality. What do I? <laughs> and I think that Pokemon has already been pretty established. I hope you get more people to play with. I think that would be so nice for you. Guys, here's the thing. Right now, I'm a, I want to pull the card myself. I don't want to trade and get it. So I'd be very open to trade with Pax. You hear that? Trade off of I'm going to give you April Kasperi's Evil um, Facebook. I've been given permission to have you. Mom, what's your email again? No, we're not doing email. We're doing Facebook. Can email it. Mm -hmm. Facebook, April Kasperi, C A S P A R I. And. Uh, April is this young man's mummy. And Mom, if you, if, I'm Mom, I'm so I'm sorry. Ten. I'm sorry. I'm somebody's mummy, so I kind of pass that along. In fact, I'm their ma, their mum, and their mummy. So I mean, I, I come. You a mummy? And a grandmummy. Wait, no, you a mummy? Like, yep. like one of those. Um, sarcophagus? Like yes, I sleep in a sarcophagus. Wait, what? Mm. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> you know where you. You're actually sleeping. You Uno. <laughs> I just saw it there. I was like, Imagine. hey, I like Una. Una. Oh, well, we'll do that next time you come to visit me, okay? Yeah. Okay, give me a hug. I think you're an amazing young man. I love you. Bye, guys. Bye. Now, we're going to have a thank you. That was a lovely kiss. <laughs> Jacob Elliott. And I've got to tell you, it's just the most amazing thing for me to meet these young people because you never know what they're going to say. And they're all smarter <laughs> than I am. I have to say, and we're going to speak with Gwen Bailey next, but first we're going to have a lovely song. Come on, Gwen. Oh, I'm coming. Yay. A lovely song by our, the president of NEK TV and our cameraman and our stalwart friend, Brian McRae, who spent a lot of time in Scotland, but came back with all of these musical numbers. I'd like to start out by saying, uh, um good day. And Kemera uh, Hashiv, how is everybody? So here's a little song uh, that I learned, and it's about um, a fellow trying to coax a young lady onto the dance floor. And uh, she's, she's got auburn hair, and, he, and he, he can't figure out how to do it, so he figures if he, if he buys her a little bit of ushkaba, or the water of life, or where the word whiskey comes from, uh, she might uh, join him. So goes a little bit like this. Nien buruarek toro rupi para ki kapal na fai ka fila nien buruarek toro rupi para yen ek shin na fai ka drum yen ek kashi yen ek kira ra ki kapal na fai ka fila yen ek kashi yen ek kira yen ek shin na fai ka drum nien buruarek toro rupi para ki kapal na fai ka fila nien buruarek toro rupi para yen ek shin na fai ka drum. So there you go. Thank you, Brian. That's my little addition to the evening. After you sang her that lovely song? Yes, I, I think uh, I think it was the whiskey that did it. Though. Really? <laughs> whiskey and music. Whiskey and music. And it's I a think great that, combination. That's how we work around here. I'm telling you. Would that work, Maxwell? Yes, he's into that. Okay, we have Gwen Beatty. What is your title? Um, I am honored to be the director of the North Country Career Center, and I'm sorry I can never remember all those words. How do you fit that on a business card? Well, usually, yeah, two lines. <laughs> Here's my business card. Yes. Oh, what is this? You gave it to me. Oh, I gave you just a little chocolate treats um, that oh. we always have around the holidays. So feel free to pass them on if they oh, are to Oh, they sea salt caramel. Yeah, I was wondering if it was yeah. a book or something. No. It's got writing. Yeah, my oh. husband, uh, John Rowe, is a very diverse man of many talents. Many people remember him as the local picture framer in town ah. for 10 years and artist. He ah. sold probably over 500 to 1,000 of his originals out of that shop over the course of 10 years. And now he um, has his work at the Matt Gallery. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. It's good stuff. So we will have you on with your art zone because incredible. I, there's so much talent around here. 
Right, and also I do want to put in a little plug. He is a man of many talents, and he just started his own um, HVAC business. So yes, I've heard. Yeah, so North Country Cooling. So he's installing um, mini splits, also known as heat pumps. Many oh, people want. Oh, and, and you get those government subsidized yes, heat pumps. Yeah, so he's registered with Efficiency Vermont, so people can find him through that website. And my understanding is people get um, loans. Right, some some low interest they get some loans. Really good stuff and, and then, those heat pumps. Right, right, yeah. because it's you know huge money saver efficiency. You know as far as heat goes, so efficiency Vermont wants to help people move away from fossil fuel dependency. It's true. And get them. Yeah. I know somebody tried to throw me on their fire the other day when they figured I was a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> I was really sick. <laughs> no, but uh, so uh, what is the name of that business again? North Country Cooling. And it is on Facebook. If you look up North Country Cooling or John Rowe, you'll find your way to... Please do that. I like ethical people, and it's, they say it's really hard to start a business here in uh, Northeast Kingdom. But we all start them, and we all believe that you'll help us with these businesses. I've got three businesses here at the house. I could use some help. <laughs> but, but the cooling and the heating business, it's something that it's, it's not just for fun. It's a necessity. And the more money you can save with that, the happier we'll all be, right? Mm -hmm. And less global warming. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Perfect. Yeah. So now back to you, Bob. Okay. So I'll just put these Uno cards away so we don't fade into a game here. Wasn't <laughs> like that a great interview? Yes. Um, you've been at this job for just two years. Right. As the director, this is my second year. I have been at the North Country Career Center since 2013 as the assistant director, and I was in charge of adult education. So I did a lot of networking, met a lot of employers, and um, started a lot of new programs for adults, which have continued. Mostly we like to highlight, we've kept licensed nursing assistant going, also known as LNA. We started medication nursing assistant, oh. also known as MNA. Really? So what that does is it helps um, nursing homes have more capacity to do um, actual nursing because it helps the LNA become a person that can distribute medication to residents, you know. Responsibly. Right, exactly. Responsibly That's a heck of a course, though. Education. Right, it's actually about, um, it's 100 hours, and you learn, it's like a pharmacology course with a clinical aspect for 40 hours. So it's Do you that, have to do an apprenticeship? Yes, you have to do, we call it a preceptorship, I believe. So you work within a nursing home, and you work with somebody on a medication cart. Isn't that amazing? Right. So those are just two of many. We've also actually introduced a HVAC um, program to adult oh, ed. No so, kidding! Yeah, so people can get their EPA 608 because they're so in demand that all the plumbing and heating people are starting to yeah. install um, mini splits. So they need people to have this EPA 608 certification, which allows people to handle coolant. Okay. You know, because when you. You mean like when, Freon? Yeah, Freon, exactly. And when I was growing up, property. there was only free love. Mm -hmm. Now there's yeah. free on. I mean, I don't know which generation is better. <laughs> yeah. I missed that one. My kids say, you missed the 60s. I did. I was such a stick in the mud. Maybe with the free on thing, I'll get going. <laughs> but uh, this is wonderful. But you've also got an outreach program that you're pretty proud of. Right, right. So we have our adult aspects that we, we work on and we grow and we try to respond to employer needs. But we also have 14 programs for um, high school students. So basically what happens in a student's um, 10th grade year, so they're a sophomore in high school, either at Lake Region or North Country, they start to look at the Career Center for their junior and senior year and they see if one of our 14 programs might be a match for them. Um, and they're, they're very diverse. We have, you know, I could list them all. We'll see how fast I can do it. <laughs> You're not in any rush. The whole show lasts an hour. <laughs> okay, um, so health sciences, and Brian knows this, Brian McRae, because he, He's up in the Career Center with us, so he sees a lot of our programs in action. So health sciences, you know, we have people that want to go into nursing, physical therapist, veterinary, you know, the whole gamut. They get this, this kind of, this intro to health careers. They do clinical rotations at the hospital. They really understand more about what they want to do. They also get um, two college courses in their first year. They get intro to health careers through CCB and uh, human biology. So both of those are taught by Dr. Kathy Gray, who's an actual vet. And I would love, I would love to be a vet or right. do anything yeah. to do with that. I used to be at dairy farming, and I mean, I love that was my favorite part of the job. I didn't, right. I'd like to go back just to be close. Do they do rotation on the farms around here? Well, that's a great, great segue because we do have animal system science taught by Emily Dayhoff, who is um, a science teacher who's heavily invested in the local um, agriculture scene. 
Did so, I meet her walking yes. through the woods with you her students You met her in the woods. Oh, I have yes. to apologize. Yes. I'm out there in the middle of the <laughs> woods on Scott's farm building teepees, right? Quietly. Mm -hmm. And all these animals, a beaver running around, and they're used to me, so they don't, they don't even know, know I'm there, and I'm talking to them just gradually, just appreciating their beauty. And I hear these wild kids coming through the woods, screaming and yelling and laughing and joking. And going, oh, there go my beavers. <laughs> you know, there go, there go my ducks. Mm -hmm. There goes everything I'm watching while I'm doing this. These kids are so noisy. Well, they came closer, and I said, you know, if you were quiet, you get to see all these animals. Well, they were studying the animals, well, they and they were. told me. Yeah. This is what they're doing, and that's what they're doing. And we're doing a little microscopic look at this pretty. We're doing this over here. Boom. Mm -hmm. I'm not here. I didn't say anything. Continue, right. carry on. They were talking to each other in scientific lingo with Emily. Right. Right. And I just thought they were making a lot yeah. of noise. I'm so ignorant. Oh, no. But I was so proud of them. And I thought, well, what, what school? And they told me all about you. Right. The Career Center, North Country Career Center. So, yes, yeah, so she does a lot of um, experiential learning on Bluffside Farm, which I'm going this way because it's right over behind your house. Yes, it's, it's 129 yeah. acres of yeah. land I don't pay taxes right. for, and it's, it's attached to my swamp. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and then she also goes to Springbrook, Springbrook Farm in Westfield, and she works with um, the farmers there, and they actually you know, learn how to handle dairy cows. Mm, um, my favorite. Actually, right, right. And actually, she's been exploring a certification um, do, that is related to artificial insemination. Oh, really? Right. So the students have an opportunity to learn about how to inseminate a cow, mm -hmm. which is, you know... Ex they never smoke a cigarette after that happens. Yeah. I must say, I've never seen a satisfied <laughs> cow. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> but we had artificial inseminators where I was working. Right. So One. you understand. And you worked on a farm, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. That's right. Yeah, I was a, the herdsman on a dairy farm. And the farmer said, do you smoke? I went, no. Do you drink? No, you take drugs. I said, no, you know, heck of a qualification. He said, no, I can teach you how to be a farmer. <laughs> and everybody laughed at him for hiring a city girl. But they didn't laugh after I'd been there a while. Right. I just, just kept going, well, what is she doing this? It was fantastic. Right. It's and I life. wish I had an education about it before, mm -hmm. but the farmers have all my respect. Mm -hmm. They do not get a day off. They do not get a minute right. off. And the minute something goes well, something else breaks down. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh my God, but the most satisfying work you could ever do. Right, and we have young people that are very passionate about farming. And artificial insemination. Right. Um, we had Mr. Larabe, and um, he had 10 children of his own. Mm -hmm. And um, he worked for uh, ABS. That's, uh, they had top shelf cow, top shelf uh, sperm. Mm -hmm. And so he would come to the farm, and one of his little daughters was, uh, introducing him and she said this is my dad he's a really good breeder and all the little kids are walking running around the driveway it's like yeah he's got 10 kids and I thought that was hilarious and, and his wife played music at the church and she said yes he is <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and you know that's Vermont humor right yeah. I just I fell in love oh, Vermont humor has got to be the best I laugh a lot living here for sure. Anyway, yeah. back to you, Bob. Oh, okay. Okay. So, do you want me to keep going? Yes, the please. Programs? I wasn't okay. counting, but I think you got four down. Um, actually, I think I only did two. Oh, there's a lot. Um, so we can move over across the hall. I'm doing this visually okay. based on how the career center is laid out. Human services. So that is another broad program where we have students that want to be um, therapists. We have students that want to be teachers. Uh, students that want to be game wardens. Ooh. Um, drug and alcohol counselors, any any profession where you're working with humans. Um, and so, so that one has a, a lot of field experiences associated with it as well. We try to get the students to elementary schools, um, Northeast Kingdom Human Services, and actually the local game warden took a student on some ride-alongs and she, I think she knows what she wants to be. You know, it completely helped her solidify her career goals. They're very tough schools to get into when you're talking uh, game board. Right. So that is, the, I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes people think of um, technical schools as like the old voc ed school of like the 70s and 80s and even 90s. And it's just not true. I would say over half, if not two thirds of our students are interested in going to college and end up going to college. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I wish I had that when I was growing up. Right. So it's because I like hands on things. Right. It helps them focus. Um, so an example of a school a class where sh almost all the students go to college would be our STEM mechatronics program, where many of the students are pre-engineering. So they will learn about hydraulics, pneumatics, um, CAD software, mm -hmm. um, 
3D printing. Oh. Um, they're just, they have over $100,000 worth of um, trainers that have all been funded through various grants. And Do you have to write all those, all those grants yourself? Um, I, I was fortunate to inherit a lot of this equipment. Um, but yes, part of my job is to continue to write grants to, oh. to update all of our equipment. Do you ever get a day off? Um, <laughs> I'm serious because... I will take these off. I'm really trying to work on the work-life balance. But um, I think my husband knows that sometimes I just I have to finish a certain amount of things every single day because the to-do list is very long. I know. I don't know yeah. how you do it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot, but you know, and then as you know, April knows and Brian knows you're working in a school and many things happen throughout the day that you need to address. You know, you want interruption, right? Student health and safety is always going to be the first thing that we have to deal with. Yeah. What is the biggest health issue over at the career center? Oh gosh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking at my colleagues here. I think, you know, we're always trying to keep kids um, aware about tobacco use. And of course we know vaping is very popular right now. So I would say we're trying to keep them healthy around that and just really discourage it, make them understand the adults are aware of like how and when they're doing it and just keep being honest and you know calling them out. Yeah, that is tough. And mm -hmm. do the parents get involved in that? They do. Um, usually they're very supportive and often horrified that their student is involved in vaping. Like I think, you know, they, they don't realize that their student can get a vape pen and I'm not sure exactly how they do that, but well, you know, it's it's not super pervasive, but it's something we're aware of and we're trying to squash. Yeah, and you, yeah, and it's yeah. really tough health issue. Yeah. I was a, I taught health yeah. for a year, two years, right? And so, um, and I, my biggest thing was nutrition. That would be another. But they were grade three and four, yeah. so they weren't right into the crack pipe yet. It was oh. like that. Was, my job was so easy. Third and fourth grade health. Mm -hmm. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. It's dealing with everyday life instead of anything that could be an issue particularly. Right. And uh, speaking of health and hygiene, I also have to put in a plug for Andrea Carbine oh! and Heidi Santon. They mm -hmm. have, they take great care of our students. They started a couple of years ago a personal care closet because what we learn is that you know if students families are receiving food stamps that does not cover. Um, health and beauty products. Oh. So we might have students arriving to school who are in need of uh, shampoo, deodorant, toothbrush, um, you know, any like sanitary napkins, anything like that, mm -hmm. um, razors. So she does a really great job stocking a closet. Is it donated? A, it's some, yeah, it's donated either, you know, directly donated or money is donated and Andrea purchases what we need for the personal where would they? Where would people donate if they wanted to? Um, they could definitely contact us and we'll just, you know, we, we do, um, you know, receipts for them so they can write off their donation and their taxes. Keep talking. Very helpful. Keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't and, follow uh, me with the camera. I can barely walk. I, will, I'll do, I just want to recognize that also Andrea recognized the food need. And so she also started a, a food shelf. And we have students that come to access that to take some food home in the evenings. Um, so we're definitely trying to address security around food and, you know, hygiene. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are the... There are mental health issues, you know. Yeah. You know, oh, and, sure. and that's been caused by I'm, COVID. And, sorry, so Brian. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. I went out to find some shampoo that I have, yeah. and oh. I never clean your house. It's not where I left it. <laughs> that's okay. I brought it home. Whenever you find it, we'll I'll take find it and bring it over. It's we'll all that it. you know. You have to, when you work for an airline. Right. The biggest perk you have are those little mm -hmm. bottles of shampoo that you right. take and you never use, and so. Mm -hmm. I have them for you. Yeah, whenever. I'm so sorry I couldn't give them to you tonight because you'll we'll have, we'll have to remind me. Yes. Um, basically, your school does absolutely so much. We try, yes. In the high school, we're fortunate to be attached to our sending high school that also has a ton of services for students, such as like uh, social emotional services. That's the, the term that we use nowadays, SEL, social emotional. So we're trying to address um, need that comes out of you know a trauma that students might be experiencing at home or. Uh, Brian was mentioning COVID-related trauma. I mean, we've all experienced some trauma from the isolation. Well, we had a young lady on last week who talked about her coping mechanism, which was writing, because mm -hmm. she was, I guess, 13 or 14, and she said that she became so bedridden with depression during COVID. And I looked at this young, beautiful child thinking, you're kidding. Mm -hmm. And as much as you've heard about it, that's the first time I've seen it. Because right. I was isolated, but I'm not 
14 and missing my friends. I'm an old lady. So it's a little different for me. And, and she said, well, I said, what did you do to overcome that? She said, well, I started writing. And she writes copiously now. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them don't have a go-to for any kind of coping skill. Mm -hmm. You know, and God forbid they have parents that say, oh, right. keep your chin up, keep the stiff upper right. lip. You know, that hurts when they're young and they have no vocabulary for it. Right. So good for you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, in partnership with the high school, we do our best. And then, of course, back to, like, curriculum, we hope that by getting the students involved in career and technical education, that will really give them hope for their future. Yeah. So STEM is uh, science, technology, in a a engineering and mathematics? It is math. We changed the M in CTE to mechatronics. And oh. so mechatronics is like a career pathway where you would go into like advanced manufacturing and you would be the smartest person in the factory. You'd be the one that knows how to fix the machines, program the machines. You'd be, you'd be very valuable. Don't look at me when you yeah. say that. Well, that's nice. I'm yeah. so glad we have children growing up to do they, this sort of yeah, thing. That's, yeah. That is great. And well, we, we have jobs locally that pay very well. So we have good partnerships with Galvian, built by Newport, Columbia mm -hmm. Forest, Ethan Allen. Isn't that amazing? Tivoli. What's Tivoli? Yeah. Tivoli, it is, um, how do you describe Tivoli? It is in Derby. It was called Butterfields. Oh, okay. When Brian and I were growing up. When I was growing up, it was Tap, tap and Die. Tap and Die. Tap and Die. That's the, that's so Tivoli still does Tap for. and Die like Butterfield. Right. Yeah. So they get contracts from probably internationally, honestly, and they, you know, have to make a part, a certain part, and then they, you know, they yeah. get the schematics for the part and manufacture it. That's another 3D yeah. technology, right? Right. Oh, God, yeah. that's amazing. It makes me yeah. want to go back to school because there's right. just so much I don't know. Agreed. And so much the 13 and 14-year-olds know. Right, right. And that's part of our mission, too. So, I mean, I can keep going. I don't know what direction to go in. Talk more about the programs, talk more about our mission. But um, one thing that's, that's risen to the top in my short tenure, well, I've been there a long time, so I have been watching since 2013, but since becoming the director, um, I wanted to address some weaknesses that I could see and became apparent through two self-studies that we did. We, what are they? Um, we are not doing enough to meet with elementary school students at a young age and introduce them to career and technical education. So we, want, we hired a person to do this work, Jillian Staniforth, who was formerly a counseling coordinator. And so she understood these weaknesses because when she was a counseling coordinator, she had been trying to be reactive and proactive. So the proactive piece is what the outreach coordinator is doing. And they are reaching out to those elementary and middle schools and scheduling after school programming, tours, um, STEM fairs, ways to interact with our students. Um, the, the list goes on. And she interacts with other outreach coordinators around the state so that she gets more ideas about ways that we can do the best work we can. Was that your idea to hire somebody like that? Because that's genius, genius really. That's well, it, the position exists. It had not existed at our career center. So it, it's actually right now, it's a hot, hotter topic in the budget. I will just give you a preview. Hopefully by the time this, shows air, <laughs> this show airs, it will be resolved. But I think for some people, they don't understand the position. It's an investment. It's an investment. Um, it addresses our weaknesses. It addresses our mission. It helps our young people make better decisions about their education. You know, by the time a child is starting high school, it's too late for them to choose because they don't know what exists. Right. So yeah. let's say you go into fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth mm -hmm. grade, and you get them interested in that. That's, right. that's job security for the tech center, career center. Right. That's job security for the it's, children. Right, it's the mission of workforce development. Right. Um, I remember I used, when I had this show, I had this show for 10 years, and then I took 9 or 10 years off uh, in another market. And one of the people I liked to interview was Doug Racine. And he was a lieutenant governor when Howard Dean was running for president and all that sort of stuff. But he was nose to the grindstone and a straight shooter. Like, no politician I ever met in my life. He was just not a politician. And we had a discussion on the funding of tech centers at that point. Oh, interesting. And he said that's his goal. He wants to get more funding for what they were called in those days. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I was affiliated a lot of times with um, the Cold Hollow Career Center, right? because I did a newspaper and mm -hmm. I hired those kids. Great. And that's how I became familiar with the need for that sort of thing, because these kids were amazing. Right. And I had been raised thinking that anybody who went to a Vogue Center couldn't go through the collegiate program. These kids were smarter than any of the other kids, to tell you the truth, because they were yeah. so multifaceted. 
Right, I could give you an example today. I observed um, one block of heavy equipment and they were doing work that would really surprise you and maybe not surprise you, but it was the students were highly engaged and these were students that I had all known, I had known for the last two years and I had seen them in class, I would worked with them in classes when they were not so engaged, not a peep from any one of them. They all had their circuit boards in front of them, they were designing a circuit, they were mapping the circuit, they were adding to the circuit. They were interacting with the teacher, they were listening to the lecture, they were asking questions, they were talking to each other. I watched a whole hour of like sustained learning. And, and maturity. And maturity. And I was watching light bulbs and I was like learning while I was sitting there. It, I was completely impressed. Mm -hmm. So if you also, if your also impression is like heavy equipment would just be students going up and driving equipment, it's not. They're learning the electrical systems. So that's what my grandson took. Right. That's right. Yes, he did. Yes. He loved it. And then he was accepted yeah. to Northeastern. Exactly. And he put everything on hold because he said, I'm going to travel. Mm -hmm. And then he bought a truck. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't traveled at all. Come on, Shay, you've got another year. Yes. <laughs> and then you've got to start thinking about what you're doing in the mm -hmm. future. But he's got all that knowledge. There's so much knowledge. Yeah, they spend the whole winter season just tearing apart engines and, and fixing and maintaining. Really? Right. I just drive it down the road and go a little faster, hit a few bumps, and there he goes, there goes my engine. Right. Good for them, eh? Yeah. And That's good for you. Is. Yeah. Gwen, will you come back? Anytime. Okay, I, we I could talk. I, yeah, I have like 10 more programs to talk about. Anytime. Oh, I know. <laughs> Let's see. But they, people can go to our website, North Which, Country Career Center. There's videos for every single one of our programs where our instructor talks for around two minutes and really gives a good overview and why, why we're so excited about career and technical education. I am excited about it, and uh, yeah. I, I really now, I, since I've been retired, quote, retired um, from my real job and living here, and then the isolation of COVID, this has been one of the best conversations I've had because I love to hear what the young ones are doing and the potential and all the things you've got going for them over there blows me away. Yeah. So this is how you get to the website. Um, just type in North Country Career Center. We should pop right up. It's NC3, I believe, is the beginning of the, the, the website name. Sorry. Or the URL, excuse me. Oh, URL? The URL. But North Country Career Center will get you there, and then you'll be able to um, click around and find the programs, and there's a video for each program, like I said. And, and if you've got children or grandchildren and mm -hmm. they have not yet met the outreach person, have them watch this. This is going to be fascinating. It'll set the hook. Exactly. And these children will grow up to be like my grandson. Right. Right. And hopefully have awesome lives doing what they love. Doing what they love. I thank you, Gwen. Yeah. Give me thank a you. Hug. Thank you so much. Thanks for Thanks coming. For You'll come back and talk about more. Anytime. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Gwen <laughs> Bailey. And now, the things I learned doing this little show, you have no idea. Uh, it's, it's the best night of the week for me because I don't get out much. And I love to talk to people, but more I like to listen. And... The things we have around here are uh, very inspiring. And I have an inspiring young lady coming onto the show next, and her name is April Caspari. And you met her mom. son over there. <laughs> her mom. I nearly said mummy. God forget Oh, mom. <laughs> how are you? I'm well. How are you? April Caspari. I met you at church. Yes. Now I stopped me going because I'm the laziest woman in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like I was standing beside you, and we were singing. And I think, you know, I like to sing. And then I hear this voice, so I just started lip syncing and standing closer, going, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm doing this, so forgive me. Yeah, say a prayer for me, because I'm standing beside this woman who can sing. You are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. What are you going to sing for our last song, do you know? Um, I thought I'd do Route 66. Oh, that sounds oh, good. Yeah, a little, yeah. little blues, a little favorite. swing. Yeah, yeah that'd be wow. great. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about you. What brought you to this part of town? Well, let's see. I, um, I've kind of lived a lot of lives and done a lot of things. As you know, I love to sing. Um, and so I was doing that for about eight years in Nashville um, before I became pregnant with my son. And when that happened, I moved back up north to be near family and decided I really wanted to work in the school systems. So I became a paraeducator for a few years. I was a one-on-one -on -one 
for a third and fourth grade uh, student over in Middlesex, Vermont. I don't know. Middlesex. Okay, yeah, this sweet little school called Rumney. I know. Rumney Elementary. And it's right there where the snow comes sweeping down the plains. That's right. It's the clo closest that school world than any other. It sure does. Yep, right off Mansfield, I think. Whatever. Or something, yeah. Um, but that's that's where I, I kind of got my official start in education, and I just loved being in the schools, I, which is very weird because I didn't when I was a student. Who does? I I, and, yeah. I actually did. But so, <laughs> well, good for you. But yeah, I did. I didn't like all all the rules and um, you know all all the work. But as an adult, I love it, and I feel like I'm able to um, understand the kids that don't love it because yeah. I was one of those kids. Yeah. Um, so after my uh, paraprofessional career, I uh, went back and got my teaching degree and then my master's in teaching eventually, and. I got the job at North Country as a visual art teacher, which is a really incredible opportunity because as you know, there are so many small schools in Vermont and a lot of fine arts teachers, it's very hard to find a full-time position. You know, they'll, you'll have a job that's, you know, Tuesday afternoons, you're at this school. So for me to find a full-time art teaching position, Fantastic. it was amazing. So it's been a dream and I'm in year six now. I think that's going to work out. When I'm you say visual happy. arts, define that for me. Yeah, well, <clears throat> visual arts, it's a very wide spectrum. So um, we're very lucky to have quite a comprehensive program. Um, I've got two amazing colleagues right in our, our visual art department. Natalie Gaines runs the 2D program. So she focuses on drawing and painting. I run the 3D program, so I focus on ceramics and sculpture. Ah. And then, of course, our dear friend Brian McRae, who focuses on all things digital. And focuses us under his camera. Yes, and he does that as well. He's a man of many talents. Well, he, he's, he's one of these uh, uh, graphic artists who's done everything. He just wrote a book. Or he just, just, he just illustrated. Did you bring a book tonight? I did bring oh. a book tonight, yeah. Oh, I to do so that beautiful. Next time. Oh, yes, I gave them really all away. Beautiful. I gave them all away. I know. Brian, you're too generous. I was lucky to be a recipient of that. Yeah, me too. So. I haven't opened mine yet, though. But getting back to that, three really talented people doing this program. Yes, we're so lucky. I mean, there's not very many schools in Vermont that offer so many different possibilities just within the visual arts. Because our fine arts department is even bigger, we offer an incredible choral, band, dance, and drama. I've been to all of them, and they're yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel so happy that our students have all these choices. They sure do. And you know, I'll tell you something that I noticed at your school. When I went to all the Christmas concerts and all the other concerts that you've had before COVID, there were the special education students who were always incorporated into the vocal arrangements and I've never seen a happier group of children. Then I went to a football game because my grandson was in the pep band. I don't know anything about football. And someone who had graduated, all the grads were back. I guess it was one of those homecoming games. Yeah, alumni. And a young man who was special education came and started talking to all these grads who were sitting around me. And they embraced him. And they brought him to sit with them. And, and he was sitting like a king. And I thought, that school has kindness. Mm. Kindness and compassion. And, and I just loved it. I don't know anything about football, but I loved watching those children be kind to each other. Absolutely. So I think if you have a fine arts department and you have music and drama and dance, those are the kids who usually fall through the cracks because the soccer uniforms come for every year, but the arts are not funded. Absolutely. Hence the sensitivity and, and the compassion in your school. You're right. Yeah, it's, that's 100% that's true, and it's very common for arts to be underfunded. And we are so lucky and so grateful to our community members and to our school board and to everybody that makes the decisions to fund our uh, programs well. I mean, we serve hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students every year, and it's, it's a real honor. I know for me, I was into athletics and drama in high school. I had no interest in any academics, and that's what got me there every day. It wasn't to go to my classes. It was a, the fun stuff that I did after school or just to go to my art class. Yeah. And because I was engaged in those, I made it through my other classes. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> Let's talk about your art. Okay. Um, well, I'm really excited because you started your own business. I started my own pottery business. Oh, thank you, honey. 
So um, recently, a good friend of mine named Rosanne, Rosanna Sear um, opened her own pottery studio in Derby Line, and her studio is called Hopewell Collective. And right now there's about five artists, I believe, um, and I get to be one of them. Oh, yay? Yes, so it's a co-op. Yeah. Um, so we pay a monthly fee to access the studio. Um, I buy all my own supplies. And I take Gosh. custom orders now, and I'm hoping to build out a website. Oh, yes. Um, I'm not quite there yet, but I will be. And I brought a few pieces here. This is a, a mug I've been working on. Um, and this is, as I was telling you, this is in greenware form. So it hasn't been killed. It has not been killed yet, which means it's very fragile, and it's bone dry. It's at its most fragile point, which all of my pottery students could tell you about. Um, but so it gets fired one time and turns into bisqueware, and from there you apply a glaze, and then you fire it a second time, and then it comes out and becomes glazeware. And that's one thing I love I so love much. I love that so much. I do too. Yeah. I, I, I use, I use um, marine varnish. Okay. On my rocks. Yes, I noticed. And yes, I mean, those are beautiful. I just like that. I, sometimes I finish a rock just so I can do that because I love the glaze. It's look. so satisfying to see that gorgeous shine. I know. What colors will be these? Yeah. Be? Well, I'm not sure. Um, a, actually, a, um, a, na a guy named Jim Morris, who was my Montessori school teacher when I was like five year old, we're Facebook friends now. And he saw that I was doing this and he said, April, I want to order two mugs. He lives out in California now. Um, so I think this one's going to be for Jim, um, and he likes browns and greens, Does so he? I'm going to go with something like that. Um, but that's one thing I love about ceramics is that it's such a process. Yes, it is. So if you finally get a piece that's fully glazed, fully fired, all of those times, mm -hmm. you've really... It's really taken a journey, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's made it a long way, and well, they well, often break this, along the way. To get to way. this particular shape, that's with your hands on the little spinner? Yes, yep. Yeah. So, um, so I throw the, the, the cup part and I do that on the pottery wheel yep. um, and then I'll pull out a handle by um, rolling a coil and then taking water with my hand and pulling down like this, kind of like milking a cow really is really a handle. Yeah. And then you shape it, you allow it to set up and get leather hard and then you've got to slip and score any attachment and then smooth everything off. Um, and then any other details that you might want to add to finish off the piece and then well, just hope it doesn't break. When you color it, it are, do you paint it or are you just going to dip it in something? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So there's dipping glazes where you would have like a five gallon bucket and you would dip or you can paint them on and that's what I've been doing lately. That's what we have at Hopewell Collective is we have uh, pints. So we use a brush and you need to put three coats on. Um, and it's just, it's just the chemical reaction is so cool when it goes into the kiln, it heats up to almost 2,000 degrees, it turns into liquid glass, and it turns into this molten glass, and then it slowly cools down and completely fuses and vitrifies the piece, which means no water can be accepted into it, and um, you're good to go to use liquid, and it's food safe. Um, microwave safe too? Yep. As long as there isn't any metal, sometimes oh. there's little pieces of gold in different kinds of glazes, so yeah. you wouldn't want to microwave that. But that's just amazing. And now you've got some little bits in there, wouldn't they? Yeah, these. You know what? These are. I call them my little like curly cues. The here. Okay, these yeah. are just these little doodly curly cues, mm -hmm. and I'm just obsessed with them. And I always end up making them. And what's so interesting to me about them is they're a side product. So when I'm making um, a pot on the, on the pottery wheel, like say this cup, I'll be throwing the cup, but then there's often um, clay on the side of the wheel. And I'll use a rib a lot of times, and I just hold that rib against the side, and it collects these little extra pieces. Oh, sorry. It's no worries. No, that's okay. Um, but most potters just kind of slough all of that off and recycle the clay. But I just find them to be so fascinating sometimes. They almost look like little creatures of the ocean or, you know, little coral pieces or something like that. <laughs> um, and I, I think what interests me most about them is they're never intended. They're kind of like a side product. They are. But they're their own art pieces in themselves. They are. So and I fire them, and I don't quite know what I'll do with them yet, but I've, uh, something. Well, you've seen my wood. Well, well maybe you haven't, but I call it Shire wood. Yeah. And I age the wood for a year, and then I dip it in or paint it in several coats. Yeah, with the polyurethane? No, with um, it's marine varnish. Okay, yes. 
and I gave a magic wand to Jacob, so <gasps> age it for a year, it's totally light. Yeah. But if he loses that in the woods, he can find it next year, it'll still be okay because it's magic. Yeah. It's a magic wand. Yeah. So I like anything with a glaze. Yes. And I like the way the glaze always brings out the green. Me too. And the texture. I just that's why I do these things. Totally. So. It's like that, or, or that notion of like a cross section. If you cut something in half and then you glaze it and polish it up, it's just fascinating. Oh, for sure. I love it. So I'm glad you, we're getting the countdown here. Okay. Um, there was a, 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 I'm going to just uh, throw in a little note here from the sponsor, okay? Sure. This show isn't actually sponsored, but as I'm promoting all local businesses, because that'll boost the economy around here no matter what, um, I want you to give your. Uh, coordinates. Okay. Um, I don't know about anybody here, but I like to read. And I used to be the town librarian where I used to live for 27 years. I was the town librarian. And uh, the library was in my house, so I never had to leave, which was good for me. But people would come and they would introduce me to different books that I would never have thought of reading. And then when I sold that house that I'd lived in for over 30 years, I had to give the books away. And I gave 4,000 to one person. I left 3,000 in the house for the new owner. And it was like losing friends. And then I found the Nevermore Bookstore. And the Nevermore Bookstore is owned by a wonderful man named Larry. It's on East Main. And let me just read the address for you. Um, it's 100 East Main Suite 2. And it's new and used books. And when I walk in there, I'm home. And it's never crowded. Larry knows where every single book is, and he's got, oh, thousands and thousands from which to choose. It's clean. When you think of a, a used bookstore, you might not think of dust-free environment, but his is a dust-free environment. Clean, comfortable, lovely. Every book you could possibly be interested in, Larry will have it for you, and at a very reasonable price. So please go to the Nevermore Bookstore. Here is his phone number. 717-468-0857. And when this gets edited, I hope that little number goes up under my name so that you can go to the Nevermore because it's a phenomenal place to go. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> Where do we contact you so that we can get that from you and from your friends at the co-op? Yes, um, well, my Facebook page is the best place right now. I am working on building out a website um, but I'm not quite there yet, so you can just find me at April Casperi on Facebook, and I can hook you up with my stuff and the other artists as well. What a wonderful thing. This is a collective society around here. Vermont is known for artisans and self-employed people, and when my company said, hey, can anybody leave our company um, because we might not have a company after COVID, who can just walk away? Does anybody have another business to go to? And I'm just like, well, I live in Vermont, so I've got three, and I can just go back to those. And so I left, but um, we are so fortunate because we might just eke out an existence, but it's an existence that we're proud of, and it's an existence that we share with each other. It's true. I mean, every time I talk to you, Heather, I'm always so blown away. It's like you're a person that's lived 300 years in I know, one Dad, I young it. woman's body. No. <laughs> Because truly, I mean, it's really something. Every time I talk, like just now, I was a librarian for 20 something years. You know, it's like, when, okay, when did you do that? In I my mean, house. But no, so I never had to leave. So all the businesses are in my house. Was never... that before JetBlue? And during JetBlue. And during JetBlue. I mean, people just, just had a to renaissance get in. woman. People know how to get into my house. I go home and people are asleep on my couch. I go, I wonder if they're dead. <laughs> I wonder how long they've been here. Look on their face. <laughs> It was just, it's just the best place to live in the world is Vermont. Indeed. So I thank you, Miss April Casperi. Thank C -A -S -P -A -R -I you. C-A-S-P-A-R-I on Facebook. J-A-C-O-B. J-A-C-O-B if you want to play Pokemon. That's true. Mm -hmm. He congratulated me for speaking correctly and pronouncing it correctly. We'd like to thank our studio audience. Whenever I tape a show, I try and get as many people off the street as I can, drag them in here. They don't know why they're here, but I'm glad they come in anyway. No, I'm kidding. Thank you very much, all my friends. Some blues. That's right. Oh, I forgot. April okay. Casper singing the blues. Oh no! Oh, oh no! All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Right. Two weeks off uh, for Christmas, and then we'll be back. This will be filming uh, starting again in January. Mm -hmm. uh,
Take it away. Right. If you uh, uh, ever plan to mow the west. Give me a little snap here, Hannah. There we go. A trap for my way, I take the highway, it's the best. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And get your kicks, ooh, on Route 66. You know it winds from Chicago to LA. Da do da do da do da do 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 do